uh, we can see your slide full screen. So whenever you wish. Okay, right. Thank you, David and Ton, for inviting me to give this evening's presentation to you all and welcome everyone. Some of you are family, I can see. Uh, I'd also like to pay tribute to others who have assisted or inspired me in my Jewish family research in England, both Sephardic and Ashkenazi. In particular, the late George Regal and Isabel Mordi, also to Doreen Berger, Dr. Anthony Joseph, Henry Roach, Louise Goldschmidt, Barbara, the Jamaican wife of the late Dr. Richard Barnett, and Sharon Heinze. And in Jamaica, inspiration was drawn originally from the late Rabbi Bernard Hooker, who served in Jamaica in 1965 to 74. Other collaborators include Ainsley Henriquez, who is the leader of the United Congregation of Israelites, the late Donna Lindo, and Dr. Marilyn Delavanti. In my genealogical journey, I had to find my own way with very little help. No one had interest in family history that I was aware of. No availability of computers or the web, all very essential today. But by visiting repositories and handling the sources, along with written correspondence, do you remember those things? This gave me a sound grounding which internet searching does not. My view of the world was from a Jamaican perspective and I had no idea how to connect with further afield or what lay ahead in my research. After many years doing what was in effect a one name study, at least that was in Jamaica and England, um, I've been placing my research on ancestry and been rewarded with new documentation and contacts, plus some very surprising DNA matches to other people. Um, on the map that you'll see here, uh, the area that I'll be dealing with mostly is in the northwest area of uh, St. James and Trelawney, as in Montego Bay and Falmouth, and in the south uh, east, uh, the Kingston and St. Andrew area, and of course, Spanish Town. These places will be mentioned. Uh, well, not the others. Um, my family name is pronounced Delgado in Jamaica, but I'll try and use the Spanish and Portuguese pronunciation of Delgado throughout. I may lapse. It translates as slender or thin or slim. I should mention that I'm not Jewish. My father was from Bristol and the environs who made Jamaica his home. And my mother was from Jamaica. She's a Delgado where her family had resided for many years centuries even, depending on which branch. I was born in Kingston and became of my, aware of my maternal Jewish lineage and heritage at the young age of 17, perhaps curious as to my middle name of Delgado, given to both my elder brother and I. Being in the right place at the right time in Kingston, I was given access to the synagogue registers during lunch breaks while attending the nearby art school. Later, when working a short drive to the National Library after work meant I could consult the many interesting reference works and newspapers there and extracted what I needed. This talk explores the route this particular Delgado line took in its journey to Jamaica. I had to lop a few branches in the island and their interaction with other established Jewish families in this talk, uh, such as the de Cordovas and Albergas and I might mention Silvera, where intermarriage was the norm. My great grandfather, Alfred Leopold Delgado, was the last Jew in my branch, a native born whose plans were dashed when his father, Charles, who's seen on the left, died on a visit to Kingston when Alfred was only 15. His mother had already died before then. To hard graft and good family connections, Alfred became a prosperous merchant in the town of Falmouth on the north coast of the island, setting up Delgado Brothers with his elder brother Philip in Brownstown, eventually owning many properties in the surrounding countryside. He was joined in the business by his sons, one of whom, Donat Alfred Delgado, was my grandfather, seen here on the right. All three of these gentlemen were born and died in Jamaica. This is the Jewish cemetery in uh, Falmouth. On the left shows the Matter House as it used to be in 1971, 
uh, it disintegrated because it was a wooden structure. Um, and it has been rebuilt. Uh, this is the cemetery as it looks now, more or less. It's been cleaned, tidied up, and lots of the um, gravestones were put back uh, on the bricks, which um, had fallen off. Um, these are some burials of the family. Um, Alfred died in 1944, aged 82, the last resident Jew and the last to be buried in the tourist cemetery in Falmouth. This disused cemetery was restored a few years ago and more recently the Matter House rebuilt and is now on the tourist trail as the town has many surviving old buildings of architectural interests. His parents were from both communities, a Sephardi father and an Ashkenazi mother, both of whom were also born in the island. My great grandfather's home after a hundred years was fortunately still in his family up until the time I left the island for London in 1979. His legacy was preserved by his custodian, his youngest and unmarried daughter, Violet, who had very many, sometimes very tall tales to tell. Alfred had married a Christian with deep roots in the island's history, which included the Jewish Samuda family from London. And another branch was an enslaved Creole black woman their seven children were brought up as Anglicans and to respect both religions and their traditions. A note that Alfred made charted his ancestors from both sides, the Sephardi on the top, on the left, and the Ashkenazi in the lower section there. Um, well, he goes back as far as Manasseh Delgado, his great grandfather, and mentions that Moses Delgado um, had brothers Isaac and George, sisters Sarah and Jemima. Alfred was born on Christmas Day, but his birthday was celebrated rather than anybody else's. This illustration on the right was printed for Delgado brothers and shows their etchings of uh, the buildings that they owned in Falmouth at that time about sort of 1880s. I'll go, I'll leave it there. Ansel Hart, who is Jewish from Montego Bay, in his monthly comments of 1968, recounts this very revealing story of Alfred's frugality. Donat Delgado was a cousin of the distinguished David de Souza. He was the senior physician at Westminster Hospital and Harley Street and full of the sentiments and affection of his father, Alfred Delgado. I wonder what has happened to the latter's collection of ancient Jamaican newspapers. I once took an unforgettable trip with my father, and that was Samuel Hart, and Alfred to New York. Neither my father nor Alfred wasted money on hotels or expensive restaurants. We boarded with perhaps a taxi driver's wife and ate out. Their choice of eating places was nondescript and haphazard. We struck when we found ourselves in company with a large number of coal heavers and were offered lunch at 25 cents. As a footnote to the reference of a newspaper collection, these ended up in what is now the National Library of Jamaica in Kingston. But where did Alfred Leopold Delgado's family origins begin? After many years of research, the story was revealed to me very slowly and eventually with the advent of the internet, I was able to make great progress back to Portugal. We step back in time to the 16th century Algarve in South Portugal. Recently, a local researcher into parish registers of, of baptisms in the coastal town of Vila Nova de Portimao confirm the existence of the first known of my Delgado line, João Pinto Delgado. As a follow-up to this, I found evidence of him when I visited the Portimao archives after his findings were published on a website about 10 years ago. Supported by Amsterdam burial and other documents and research by Cecil Roth on the Maranos of Rouen, including this Delgado family, these facts are secure. The route they took from Portimao was via Rouen in France, Hamburg in Germany, settling in Amsterdam for a number of years in Holland and on to London. 
Joe Pinto Delgado the first and his wife Mor Ferreira had two children, one of whom Beatriz was baptized in 1583 as a child in her teens in the Catholic Church of Portimao. The baptism registers began in 1575. Their son, Gonzalo Pinto Delgado, was born about 1563 at Portimao before the registers began and was married at Antwerp in 1582 to Inez Nunez. This is uh, showing the region that we're discussing here. And here is Portimao towards the left and um, Silvesh, which is a very old Moorish town until 1249. Uh, the river uh, ran past Portimao up to Silvesh, but then it silted up and Portimao was um, a very important town in that area at that time. Uh, this is just an old map showing what's labeled Reino do Algarve, which is the kingdom of Algarve. And in the map here, it says VN de Portimao. Um, older maps just show it simply as Villanova. No mention of Portimao. Mm -hmm. Their children, also both born at Portimao, adopted Portuguese names. Sons, João, Gonzalo and Diego, and a daughter, Francesca. Gonzalo, the father, moved to Rouen and took an active part in activities there. But influenced by the, influen uh, the Inquisition, moved to the safe haven of Amsterdam, changed his name to Abraham and his wife to Sarah. They died there in 1649 and 1640, respectively. The poet, João Pinto Delgado, who published the poem of Queen Esther at Rouen in 1627 uh, in Spanish, was named after and sometimes confused with his grandfather of the same name. Like his parents, he took refuge in Amsterdam and the name Moses, uh, where he died in 1653. He and his wife had no children. These Amsterdam burial cards reveal a lot of information. Here for Abraham, or Gonzalo as he used to be known, Van Jao on the left, and also Menasa Hiscayo Delgado on the right. Hello. Giving family information such as marriages, children, parents, dates and places, as well as the inscription on their gravestones. This uh, came from a website which is dot org uh, with a search of additional databases and there are masses and masses of these cards i've printed off all of those that i could find for delgados studied the whole lot and compared them to other documents in amsterdam the other son my ancestor was diego delgado born about 1590 at portimao he made his way to hamburg where he married and died but details are not yet known from this community. However, referred to in Amsterdam as Moses, he had a known son, Manasseh Hisquire Delgado, who was born in Hamburg about 1627 and went to Amsterdam as a bookkeeper where he married Rachel Mendez in 1669. She was born about 1645 at Veracruz, which I think was in Portugal. And here we have very revealing document of this marriage, which Ton has had a look at and confirmed the details that I mentioned. All the children were born at Amsterdam, a daughter, Esther, followed by sons, Isaac, Moses, and Joshua. Names that would permeate through the next two centuries in Amsterdam, but down a very narrow family line where Jewish naming patterns were closely followed. Manasseh died in 1693 and Rachel in 1706. These are Portuguese inscriptions that were noted on their gravestones. These Delgados seem to have lived fairly long lives. When the call came, were all buried at the Udekirk Jewish Cemetery on the outskirts of Amsterdam on the river, river Amstel, as all Amsterdam Sephardi Jews were. 
this is another set of burial cards, which, is which are basically following the Delgado line through, overlapping and confirming details, as mentioned before. The card on the right is for Manasseh, Van Moses, Van Manasseh, Vizcaya Delgado. The item to follow is of his circumcision, which is noted here. Um, <clears throat> also confirms the next step in our travels. And this is the item I've mentioned. Uh, at the very bottom, there's mention about Menasso Philo de Menasso Delgado, Mo Mose Delgado, and it gives the date. There are lots of these in the records in Amsterdam. So my, for the next stage, I will go on to uh, London. <clears throat> Isaac Delgado was born about 1724 in Amsterdam, the second son of Manasseh Delgado and his first wife, Rachel, who were also first cousins. His mother died when Isaac was about nine and his father remarried twice more in Amsterdam. Isaac came to reside in London about 1760 and became a member of the Bevis Marx congregation. He married Esther de la Pena um, on the 25th of May, 1763, recorded in Bevis Marx. I've not established her parentage, but she had a brother, Mordecai Penner, who in his will proved in London in 1781, which was translated from Spanish, uh, named executor's brother-in-law, Isaac Delgado of St. Mary Axe, David Samuda of Red Lion Street, and David Aguilar of London Fields Hackney. In particular, he mentions his dear mother and sister, and above all, and most probably to be under the direction of my sister, Esther Delgado, her husband and son. As later to find out, David Samuda was also an ancestor, but that's another story. Isaac and Esther had four known children, all born in London. In order, they were Manasseh, Rachel, Sarah, and an unnamed daughter. Sarah, the only one mentioned in surviving Bevis Marx registers, was born in 1768. And the unnamed daughter died in infancy and was buried in the Nova Cemetery, Mile End, in the East End of London in 1770. Um, this mention of Nova Cemetery uh, occurs a few times of anyone who's in this family uh, and that was buried in London. So I won't, I'll try not to repeat it too many times. Um, Isaac was a tobacconist and snuff maker. In co partnership with Joseph Pinero at Old Castle Street, Whitechapel, London, <clears throat> the firm known as Joseph Pinero and Co. was dissolved in August 1788. And here's a notice that appeared in the London Gazette. He was also an author and described himself as a teacher of the Hebrew language and resided at number 57 St. Mary Axe, London. In 1789, he published a new English translation of the Pentateuch in London. This was republished in 1868 in five volumes, Hebrew and English, from number 35 St. Mary Axe. Original, original copies were at the library of the London School of Jewish Studies, Hendon, but these have now been transferred elsewhere. St. Mary Axe, as some of you may know, is within walking distance of Bevis Marks Synagogue. Administrations of the goods, chattels and credits of Rachel de Caceres Henriquez, formerly Delgado, Joshua Delgado and Gideon Delgado, all siblings of Amsterdam, deceased, were granted in 1793 to Isaac, the nephew and next of kin. This grant was proved in London in 1794, where Isaac resided after they had all died in Amsterdam, of course. Esther died 1793 and Isaac 1798, both presumably at their residence in St. Mary Axe. I mentioned their three children. I'll start with the two daughters first, very briefly. Uh, Rachel Delgado, born about 1766 and married Daniel Diaz, son of Isaac and Sarah Diaz in 1784. They had 11 children and Daniel died 1811, Rachel in 1820. All births deaths 
uh, and burials are married, uh, mentioned in the very smart registers. The other sister, Sara Delgado, was born in 1768 and was twice married according to the registers. The second was to Abraham Arobus in 1794. This get or letter of divorce concerning these two is housed in the Jewish Museum in London, dated 5546 or 1806. I'm informed by Ian Rosenbaum, an Australian Jew who is descended from the aforementioned sister Rachel and Daniel Diaz, when we visited the museum, but it's written in Aramaic. It seems they both remarried, and when she died at the Portuguese Jewish Hospital, Stepney in 1851, aged 82, she was the wife of Moses Arobus, a teacher. Manasseh, the only son of Isaac and Esther, was born about 1764 in London. In 1786, he and Rachel Dajaveda were married, according to the Bevis Marx registers, and she was the daughter of the Haham of that synagogue, Moses Cohen Dajaveda, and his wife Sarah, daughter of Abraham Henriquez Faro. Both were formerly of Amsterdam, but now living in London. Manasseh and Rachel had a total of eight children, all of whom, except the last, were born in London between 1787 and 1799. Of these, two died and were buried uh, in London before the key year of uh, 1800. These um, are the entries in Bevis Marks registers of all the Delgados which are all part of this one family. During the period from the time of his marriage until the year 1800, Manasseh and his family resided in Whitechapel or Tower Hamlets Borough of London. He was a tobacconist by profession as was his father. Manasseh, the natural and lawful son and next of kin, was the administrator of his father Isaac's estate. He died in 1798 and Admon was granted on the 29th of May, 1800. I'll mention this. Uh, he is the Haha Moses Cohen Dajavedo, and he was the chief rabbi of Bevis Marks. And in his will, he mentioned he would like to be buried in the Novo Cemetery. He and his widow, Sarah, were reburied in 1974 at Golders Green. They were given a new tombstone. This was following the destruction of the Nova Cemetery earlier that year. And he seems to be one of the very few people that were not reinterred elsewhere in a mass grave um, because of his position, no doubt, with the Bevis Marks as being the chief rabbi. Uh, very few people were given that honor. And this is a copy of his will in 1784. So we move on to Jamaica now <clears throat> in 1800. Shortly after the estate was settled, the whole family migrated to Jamaica in the year 1800 and embarked at Port Royal, a naval port at the mouth of the Kingston Harbor. Their eighth and last child, George, was born in Port Royal on the 8th of October, 1801. Not long after their arrival, the family moved across the harbour to a more secure location on the mainland, settling in the city of Kingston, which had a thriving Jewish community for the past hundred years. Manasseh died in Kingston in 1815, aged about 50, but intestate. His widow Rachel survived a few years and she also died in Kingston on the 2nd of December, 1821, age 51. Her obituary stated, 21 years she resided in this island during which she never experienced a fit of sickness. This confirms the year of arrival was during 1800. The comment about her health was unusual but mortality rates were high due to many factors. So I suppose reaching 50 plus was fairly good. I'd briefly like to mention, um, or just to tackle the history of the Jews in Jamaica. 
Um, the island was captured from the Spanish in 1655 by mistake rather than design. And Marana Jews, also known as New Christians or Conversos, were said to be living there, probably in the only town, St. Jago de la Vega, renamed Spanish town. Jews were now free to practice their religion openly, welcomed by Cromwell into English territories, and so it was in Jamaica. The first mention of a synagogue was at Port Royal, which was destroyed in the earthquake and mini tsunami of 1692, when most of the town disappeared under the sea. Jewish communities also formed all around the island, mostly on coastal areas, and cemeteries appeared in 22 of these locations. The oldest is at Hunts Bay, sited opposite Port Royal, dating from the 17th century, from before the destruction of the town and used for many years after. This map is of the Kingston Harbor and Port Royal Harbor. Um, it's to show you that, well, it was a very heavily defended area uh, after the destruction of Port Royal, which is here, um, most people moved across into Kingston, which was then set up there. Um, burials took place here in what's the Hunts Bay area or Greenwich, just to the west of Kingston. And of course, the only way to get there is by boat, by going across to there. So all the Jews were not buried, that lived in Port Royal, were not buried there in Port Royal because it was a very sandy um, spot built on coral. And they were transported to this area and buried there, which is, was a, turned out to be a very good thing because, um, well, all the um, gravestones have been um, investigated now and photographed from that period of time. And Spanish town, the capital, was off to the, the left, the west, in a different parish, St. Catherine. Kingston was formed following the Port Royal catastrophe about 1700, and because of its location became the commercial center of the island, while Spanish town, the capital, was the seat of government and administration, until the capital was transferred to Kingston in 1872. Sephardi and later Ashkenazi synagogues ministered to the Jews of Spanish Town and Kingston. The only other location consisting of a joint congregation was consecrated in Montego Bay on the north coast in 1845, but this didn't last for more than about 60 years. Presently, there is only one synagogue in Duke Street, Kingston, consecrated in 1911. This was following the destruction of the previous one in the 1907 earthquake and was amalgamated as the United Congregation of Israelites, but now lacks a rabbi. There's also only one functioning cemetery nearby in Orange Street, Kingston, which serves both communities. The Jewish community has suffered not from any prejudice or hatred, but due to destruction of synagogues and many of the early registers from fires and earthquakes especially those of 1882 and 1907. The Jewish community has dwindled over the years from approximately 2,000 in the island during the 17th century to approximately 200 people now, uh, which are mostly residing in Kingston. Ainsley can confirm all this. The causes are mainly due to the usual reasons of further migration within the New World or marrying out. Finally, all Jamaicans, regardless of race or religion, are fully aware of the legalized enslavement of Africans brought to the island to work on sugar plantations. This made Jews and others in control very wealthy up until the abolition of 1834. And the debate will continue for a long time to come. We know it was wrong, but it did happen and we must acknowledge its existence, not condoning it, but at the same, same time, not trying to rewrite history. Another note of this is the fact that uh, Jews had many children outside of their um, legitimate marriages. And um, if you look through the baptismal registers, which are available on family search, um, you'll see a lot of Jewish names in there. 
um, as if their names were given as being uh, the, the fathers, usually the fathers, not the mothers. And, and so there are a lot of um, people in Jamaica who are not Jewish, but maintain the same sort of surnames as um, the, the Jewish community. Uh, for instance, Lindo, uh, that's very frequent. Returning to the Delgado narrative, Manasseh and Rachel and their surviving three sons and two daughters made their life in Kingston. And the Delgado surname became much more prolific there than in London. The eldest son was Isaac, whose Jewish wife bore 17 children. But time does not allow for this line to be discussed here, except for a brief mention of two of his descendants at the end of this section, if time allows. However, I'll concentrate on the second son, Moses, my ancestor, and the third who was George. Of the two daughters, Sarah never married, and Jemima married Daniel Hart and had a number of children in the island. Moses Delgado was an important figure in Jamaica's Jewish history. So I'll give a little bit about his uh, life story. He was born in London in 1789, and as the second son was named after his grandfather, the Haham Dajaveda of Bevis Mark Synagogue. He was 11 years old when the family migrated to Jamaica. The link was still maintained with Port Royal as his first marriage in 1811 was in that town to Leah de Paz, daughter of Jacob de Paz of Port Royal. Their first child was born there a year later, but their other four children were born in Kingston where they now resided. Leah died in Kingston at an early age, about 27 years old. Sephardi naming traditions in Jamaica were not henceforth followed. Moses remarried a year later in 1819 in Kingston, which is shown in this report here as well. To Mary Ann Nunes, daughter of Abraham Israel Nunes and Sarah, his wife, Moses and Mary Ann also had five children born in Kingston. One of these childs was my great great grandfather, whose portrait was shown at the very beginning of this. Sarah Nunes's gravestone of 1832, she died aged 66, said she was the mother of 20 children, of whom seven sons and seven daughters were surviving at the time. Moses and his family resided in a large house in Stanton Street, now Upper Duke Street in Kingston, which was uh, part of the city and parish of Kingston, which is the downtown area now which he bought in 1831 from Mordecai Palachi for 2,200 pounds. Moses was a Kingston merchant, as were his brothers, which was a general profession of many Jewish men of the time, trading as Moses Delgado and Co, described as being one of the great merchant princes, having stores in Port Royal Street near the wharves in downtown Kingston. He was, again as most Jewish men of the time were, involved with Masonic lodges, usually subsidiary lodges with connections to Britain. He was master of the Friendly Lodge number 239 in 1822, which was consecrated in 1797, one of the most important lodges in the island. It was heavy, heavily populated by Jewish people. He also served in various posts in the Sephardi synagogue, including being the president in 1829. This was built in 1750, but destroyed by the fire of 1882. The Jewish community presented to Moses Delgado an engraved silver tankard, along with a parchment address, which altogether cost a hundred guineas on the 13th of December, 1831. This was a show of gratitude in recognition of the fact that he had been the chief person involved in gaining full political emancipation for the Jews of Jamaica in that year. This event occurred 27 years before similar events occurred in England. Moses had gained the help of a member of the House of Assembly of Jamaica, who had submitted petitions to the House, which were drawn up by Moses in 1826, 27 and 1831. At the presentation ceremony held in the vestry room of the Sephardi synagogue, Moses thanked the Hebrew nation for their gift, 
which he promised to hand down to his children, who will ever view it with feelings of pride of a nation's gift to a beloved and affectionate father. In his will, he bequeathed the tankard to his eldest son, Alfred, who in turn bequeathed it to his son, also named Moses. So ownership went down this family line. It's now held by the synagogue for safekeeping. And it was presented here by Miss Fera Delgado, his great granddaughter, to um, a representative of the United Congregation, Stanley Moulton. Like many Jews and others in, up to emancipation in 1834, Moses and his brother Isaac were awarded compensation for the loss of what was then considered property, enslaved people of African origin. The small numbers of enslaved people they own, which they received this compensation for, suggest they were not plantation owners, but these uh, enslaved people would have served in their Kingston homes or perhaps in their business premises. Moses died in Kingston on the 18th July, 1842, age 53, from scarlet fever. An obituary said he was an old and respectable inhabitant and merchant of this city and was much esteemed by those who knew him. He was buried in a Jewish cemetery on Orange Street. His widow Marianne, who survived him by 27 years, was president of the Ladies' Committee of the Jewish Bazaar, which raised funds to build the Jewish Arms House, and she was selected to lay the foundation stone in 1864. She died at her home in Stanton Street in 1869, aged 72 years, and was buried alongside her husband. And these are um, taken from the actual gravestones and from the monumental inscriptions which are recorded. This obituary on the left was actually taken from an Australian newspaper which contains more information than the one in Kingston had, which I found very strange. And this was actually found through a hint on a website called Jamaican Family Search, not to be confused with Family Search. And this is a copy, a part of um, a copy of the will which is held in Spanish town. The youngest son of Moses and Marianne was Charles. He was my great-great-grandfather, born in Kingston in 1824, and the only one of his siblings who moved to Falmouth on the northwest coast about 1846. He traded with his family and other Jews in the island. Four letters written to Charles from his Delgado relatives in 1847 survived. These were from a bundle that I saw in 1974. The contents of these letters that I have and have seen, the contents concern basically business advice and chat about family matters. Charles married Harriet Phoebe Levine from Antigua Bay, not far from Falmouth, in 1852. They had six children, including my great-grandfather, Alfred Leopold Delgado, before she died aged 27, and they all lie buried, with the exception of Charles, in the Falmouth Jewish Cemetery which we saw at the beginning. Charles was buried in Kingston and his will was proved in London. Harriet's family were Ashkenazi Jews who had emigrated separately from England to Montego Bay. Her father, Sidney Linda Levine, who published a Montego Bay newspaper, had a very interesting life story and background and he would take a whole session to deal with, I think. This section concerns the Delgado line returned to England, their connection to Bevis Marx and whose descendants remain Jewish, some of whom still reside in the UK today. George Delgado, who was born at Port Royal in 1801, was first married at Kingston in 1829 to Rachel Louise, the widow of Samuel Nunes Cavallo, which later union produced two sons. Rachel, on a visit to London, died there in 1838 and was buried in the cemetery, the Nova Cemetery. George took an active part in the civic and religious life of Kingston, serving the Sephardi synagogue there. He traded as a West India merchant with Raphael Nunes Cavallo, who had moved to London 
and the firm was known as Delgado and Cavallo, as highlighted here at the base of this, dare I say, a horrible looking teapot. Um, this uh, illustrates one of the letters that I mentioned, and this was from George. This is George's handwriting to his um, nephew, Charles, in Falmouth of 1847. George migrated to London during 1853 and the following year married Bessie, the daughter of Moses Abraham at the bride's residence in Bristol. As George was a resident in London, the marriage was recorded in the Bevis Marks registers, shown here at the foot of the page. Bessie was born at Frome, Somerset, and they were also known as Gershom and Pessie. This marriage produced three daughters and one son, all born in Islington between 1855 and 1860, as the family residence called appropriately Kingston Villa. Sadly, George didn't live too long to enjoy this family life. He died in December 1863, age 62, and was buried in the Nova Cemetery. Death notices were published in both London and Kingston. It was while extracting newspaper data that I discovered what had happened to Uncle George and was then able to trace his entire family line in the UK through official sources. The Collier Ferguson newspaper extracts, which I've shown here, um, were also very useful in achieving this. Um, this is touching a very um, large area of research. The Collier Fer Ferguson manuscripts are a fantastic source of information for all sorts of uh, different reasons. <clears throat> Bessie died in 1891 and buried along with her husband. The Delgado family Bible begins with George's marriage to Bessie in 1854 and records all family events to the present and is in the possession of his great-grandson in London. I'll mention very briefly, George Gershon Delgado, the only son of George and Bessie, was born in London. His father died when Gershon was only three years old, but his mother never remarried. Gershon married Sophia, daughter of Frederick Samuel Cohen in 1895 at the Branston Street Synagogue. They had one daughter and three sons and resided in North London most of their life until his retirement. He served the Bevis Mark Synagogue and his name can be found <clears throat> in numerously on the Pranassim panel in the synagogue. He was also involved with all aspects of the stationary manufacturing business operating from City Road in London. Gershon died in 1946 in London. Uh, he and his wife, Sophia, who died in 1920, were buried in the Sephardi side of the Golders Green Cemetery. That's the right-hand side of the cemetery where you, when you go in, you'd see that all the gravestones are dead flat. Oops, wrong one. And not to be confused with the left side, which has uh, uh, different uh, sort of amalgamated uh, groups of people. George and Bessie's descendants in England also married into Jewish families, namely the Enoch, Torres, Finzi, Simonson, and Pulitzer. Uh, very briefly, one set of relatives ended up in New Orleans, um, Samuel Del Delgado, one of the 17 children of Isaac and of Jamaica and his nephew, a grandson of Isaac, who also bore his name. Uh, so migrating from Jamaica, they're successful as sugar merchants. And um, Isaac was a benefactor. He left large charitable donations to the city of New Orleans. Uh, the former Delgado Museum of Art, which is shown here on the left, but it was renamed the New Orleans Museum of Art. And also there's a Delgado College, which is still going very strong with that name. And they're buried in this very elaborate tomb in the Metair Cemetery in New Orleans. And I think maybe I've gone on long enough. What do you think, David? 
Shall I go into? I, I, I think I think that was fascinating. Can can I um, just put a couple of the comments um, that that were made? Um, both Carol and Judy were were commenting that um, people who were formerly enslaved um, would take the uh, the surnames of their former owners. Um, do we know, for example, you were saying there were lots of Lindos, if if that was the case? Presumably, this would have happened in a very short period, just around sort of emancipation. But um, are you are you so confident when you're saying that people are, are descendants? Of, of, of this Sephardim that they are rather than just descendants of enslaved people? Yeah, um, the surnames that were given to enslaved people, it, they were given surnames basically when they were baptized. Um, yes. Previous to that, they didn't necessarily have any um, surname. Um, they were given names, not necessarily the estate owner, but they could be of um, uh, oversayers or people, I'd say maybe the, the, the white population, basically, they would be, um, they're all anglicized names anyway, but they would also contain names of um, some of the Jewish fami families that were there. Um, maybe because Jews did own some of the plantations in Jamaica, but not a huge amount, not compared to say um, the, the um, UK population. But, but Jews were, um, were, were parents of, or fathers, right, rather, of illegitimate children, yes. And, and no, a lot, I, of, I, a lot I, of them did admit to this in the bap baptismal registers. And I have my great-grandfather to include in one of those. Too. Um, okay. I, I, I think also we should just mention that... Um, over the last couple of years, it's become quite commonplace to be able to, well, not commonplace, but a lot of people are starting to be able to trace their family trees all the way back to, uh, to Portugal and Spain. Um, you did this in the pre-internet day. Um, so um, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's quite remarkable. I mean, it's, it's um, yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's outstandingly good. Um, does anybody um, have any questions um, I, either here or um, on um, on YouTube? Um, actually, I, I do have just so, so sorry, Tony. In case you're going to say something, um, the fire of 1882 was that just of the synagogue, or was it in a sort of wider wider Kingston. area? It was in Kingston. It's sort of the downtown Kingston area. And, and a lot of the registers were um, lost. Yes. Uh, what, what that meant was they did salvage a few, um, but the Sephardi um, register of births, marriages and deaths only start from 1809 onwards. Um, yeah. And this, this information has been put on the Jamaica Family Search website as well. They've extracted all that data and put them up there as well as the amalgamated uh, registers, which followed on from the strictly Sephardi. Um, the Ashkenazi also had some registered um, registers that, that, that were salvaged too. Um, but a lot of the Ketuba uh, documents uh, all destroyed. Um, okay, I, I mean, of course, um, Stan, Stan Movis has recently um, done some work from um, Wills. Um, and you, 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 you mentioned Freemasonry, which is kind of interesting. There might be further records there. And I think there, were, there, there, there are the, um, the court records of Jamaica um, in Kingston and, and Safadim are sort of notoriously litigious. So, so, so maybe there's, there's further information. Yes, and there may be land records. Yes. Because yes. of uh, lots, possessions. Lots of land records, yeah, land transfers. Yeah. Land. So we are not done yet researching Jamaican Jewish families. There's, there's a um, lot of information out there, you know, there really is. There's an interesting possible. question here. Was there an old tradition in your family of Portuguese Jewish ancestry before you started your research? Um, I wasn't really aware of it. I mean, I, I heard stories from my 
great aunt um, and and she was very much um, held her father who was Jewish in very high esteem um, she, and I have a lot of photographs of him and and um, actually none of his wife she, she would seem to have been written out of, of history almost oh, um, a pity. But, but I wasn't really aware much before that of yeah. the, the impact that, that mm -hmm. all of this meant uh, Keith Atkinson asks, Great. can the Jamaican Family Search website develop a better index, please? Uh, I can answer that one, I think. It's it's frozen. It's not, it's there, but it's uh, no longer updated or developed right. any further. Yeah, it was taken over by the UCL, um, University College London. Um, when the person who set up the website could no longer continue with it. So there's been no more contributions to it. Um, the, the search facility is absolutely rubbish. Um, but <laughs> that's just my opinion. Um, but I think the they, UCL took it over because of their connection with the um, slavery records, which I showed earlier. Um, mm -hmm. Because they're, you, they're tapping into what's on that website um, which has all the uh, people who used to own properties and they're, they're, they're able to sort of build up a history of the, the ownership of all these properties through that particular website. So it, it's good that they've taken it on. They're, it's an umbrella situation with them. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a shame it's not, not being continued. Yeah. Did the Delgado family have any connection with the Pinto family uh, because of this uh, Joao Pinto Delgado in the beginning? Oh, I, only, only in Jamaica with, with mm. Claude, Claude Pinto Delgado, uh, Claude de Sola Pinto, yeah. who um, uh, married one of the um, Delgados of another. Yeah, I, I, I think we should first ask. Which Pinto family? Because there are so many of them. Well, quite. But this was in Jamaica, though. Mm -hmm. and, and we're talking like in the sort of 1900s. Yeah. And, it, mm. it, is, it is the De Solo Pintos because I, I, I used to slightly know um, David Pinto. I think he, he was living in New York. I think he's now in Montego Bay. He's a potter and he's a, mm -hmm. he's a yeah. cousin of my, my friend you. Andrew Pinto in, um, in London. Fran Fran Francis is asking how, how most people made their livings. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming there are a few people like the Lindos who, who own these big sugar plantations and um, everyone else doing other stuff. Well, remember that Jamaica was one of the, the, the key um, overseas territories that, that uh, the UK owned. I mean, it was, um, sugar was king in those days. So it, it brought in a huge amount of money to this country, which is why they're all busy examining now um, which city and which town and wherever has some connection with slavery because that's where the money went. They brought it back to the UK yeah. and built all these lavish um, residences or developed their town centers, whatever. So there was a huge amount of money to be made in that country. And so they... Um, they set up businesses basically, um, mainly all around. That's why there are so what twenty two different localities where the cemeteries are to be found. Um, yeah. They're all over the island, and they all traded in different um, goods and services and, and crops and such like. Um, so it was richer than New York at one time. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, interesting. Eh? Uh, New York was settled largely from the Caribbean islands and notably Jamaica. The first uh, settlement in New York, circa 18, 1654, um, uh, well, did not do very well and disappeared by 1664. And then in 1680, a new wave of Sephardi Jews came, and they came from Jamaica and other Caribbean islands. And in that way, New York was settled again. Yeah. Um, there's a question about, uh, are there records of transit 
for the families from London to Jamaica or other North American destinations, Did like they, ship records. The place that I, I haven't actually gone through it yet, but newspapers, newspapers carried passenger lists, um, <laughs> those departing, those arriving. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that's one good source of it. Um, I don't know if, um, well, if, if Ancestry has um, records that you might tap into as well in the sort of immigration, etc. But going way back, I think, like, if I was to look for 1800, if I went through all the newspapers, I might find out the, the, the arrival mm. of the family in, in the island. And um, before that? Um, well, newspapers and well, the thing is that the newspapers in Jamaica are the National Library and they, they go quite far back in terms of sort of 1790s mm. or whatever. Um, mm. pu publishing in Jamaica is, is excellent, um, mm. but unfortunately not a lot of it's on the web. And the Gleaner archives is not brilliant and it only starts in um, 18... 64 to be honest uh, even though they both it starts at the beginning in 1834 yeah. that, that's rubbish they only have the first page and then it skips all those years and <laughs> the, the quality is is left to be desired as well you've got mm. missing issues you've got very poor scanning and you know all the rest of it mm -hmm. you can't you can't digitally search properly sometimes yeah but i, I don't know of many yeah. um other um if I may add to that, uh, uh, a few sources of information for the 18th century uh, could be the annual accounts of Bevis Marx, yes. which are now online, with the National Library of Israel. And if you look for an entry called uh, uh, Despachos to North America, you will find a few names each year. Are going to of people going to Jamaica and to North America, New York, uh, with some support of the London community, and the same is true for Amsterdam. There were uh, despatches from Amsterdam to Jamaica. I put up a list on some Facebook groups, and I believe I counted uh, seventy uh, names in a period of six years, 60 years time. So maybe your ancestor will be in there. Uh, Should we mention sources, or, unless you want to do some more queries? Or? There are still some more questions. Yeah, OK. Okay. So Keith um, is asking about um, researchers in J in Jamaica. Um, I've um, I found a lady who can go and take photographs in in archives, but um, I don't know. I would suggest that uh, Ainsley Henriquez is probably the person who can uh, can best advise you on that. Um, uh, Fran 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 Francis is asking sort of the basic questions about sort of who 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 they were, what they did, how they lived. I, I do 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 we have that sort of information? Because you know, it's, it's are we talking about Jews or? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, if we're looking about sort of Jews in Jamaica in 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 the 18th century, um, do we actually know much about the sort of the their social um, circumstances? Um, I mean, did they, did they stick to themselves, or or, or, or were they sort of more integrated socially? Because um, I, th I think there was there was some um, discrimination. I think wasn't there when there a, a certain Texas. amount, a certain amount of it. Yes, um, they they were a bit sort of between a rock and a hard place in some cases. They weren't necessarily considered white by the white population, but they weren't. Um, uh, you know, they're, they're between the sort of uh, mixed race community, if you like, um, they sort of despise them because they weren't white yeah. enough or something like that. Um, 
there was there was this gradation of class and color and that and that that was very much in the background of everything um, for many years um, even after slavery was up, abolished um, but th th they did sort of stick to themselves I guess to a certain extent I mean the, there are quite a few synagogues in Kingston um, yes. um, so they, they very much um, followed you know the, the everything um, okay. and and I think they sort of answered to um, Bevis Marx as well which I hadn't realized at the very beginning as Bevis Marx answers to I suppose Amsterdam in a way didn't it um, yeah, I mean, presumably there, there was no Beth Din in, in, in Jamaica, so presumably the questions like on that would be referred back to Bevis Marx. But I think Jamaica was quite well ordered. In Barbados, they were continually fighting each other and, you know, kept re referring to mother in London. Um, but uh, who, who, who knows what's, um, what's in the archive. Um, I, it, it's great to see Ainsley, Ainsley Enriquez is, 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 is here, which is... is um, you can take over. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there, there, but, were, <clears throat> there were organizations within the Jewish community. <clears throat> Ainsley can tell you about that. <clears throat> there was Wizzo, um, there's Gemlut Hazardim Society and all sorts of things where they looked after their own, um, the poor or, you know, organizations within the Jewish community. So they're all part and parcel of that. Um, maybe they didn't get involved with, with the Christians, if you like, too much. Um, perhaps the Christians didn't like them too much either, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um... Ton, Ton seems to have lost his uh, his connection, but what would this group be without um, losing one of our our, uh, <laughs> our, our compares? Could, could, could I just quickly mention, um, well, whilst everyone is here, that obviously um, we shall be here next week, but also a bit earlier at um, 2 p.m. British time, the Jewish Genealogical Society of Great Britain will have its uh, Dutch and Sephardic group. And if, if you're in Britain and you don't belong, you should uh, really join the society. And um, the speaker will be uh, Bernard Miller, who's who's here and is a big supporter um, of, of our group. And, and he will be talking on, on Nordic Noir, which I am assuming is to do with the Sephardim in Denmark. Um, and also, of course, there was a... Uh, various Danish colonies, I think they're now the America, US Virgin Islands um, in the Caribbean. And um, I mean, something I've found uh, over the last few years is, is that the Caribbean is, is becoming a bit, especially Jamaica, is, is becoming a bit of an epicenter for um, Sephardic genealogy. Every, every time I go to a genealogy show and sit on the Jewish Genealogical Society um, uh, stall, um, somebody, a sort of black person always comes over and starts by saying, you won't believe this, but, and then, then starts discussing their, their, their Sephardic ancestry. So, so hopefully um, we're, we're seeing a, uh, a discovery um, in, in Jamaica or rediscovery. Um, so I'm just, just, just uh, looking um, through my notes. Uh, Ton is returned um, to us and I will just um, un unmute him. Um, we, we have rather sort of gone on too long. We were hoping that um, Steve uh, would be able to discuss um, sources, but what we will do instead, uh, if, if, if it's okay with Steve, is if he can sort of supply us uh, with a list of sources, and um, I will post them um, to sephardicgenealogy.com. Um, I'm, I'm sort of making a, a Jamaica page um, there anyway. Um, but obviously, Steve has uh, forgotten uh, more than I ever knew. Um, Ton, um, do you have any, any more um, pearls of wisdom to to add. Um, um, uh, one more bit about the archives. The Barbados archives are now part of the Bevis Marx archives. Yes. 
and they will be online at some point in the future. So that's that's about it. Oh yes, and uh, if you are researching the Kohenda Azevedo family, you can contact me on Facebook. Okay, and we'll also uh, so somebody um, Kevin's asking to uh, post the information also to the Sephardic diaspora group, which hopefully everyone uh, belongs to. Um, Judy's saying that Ocasio Cortez has family that were Jews from Jamaica. I, I'm a little bit dubious about that. Uh, Steve, what do you reckon? I mean, I, I don't know if she has Sephardic ancestry. Steve, do you? Do you know it anything? Puerto Rico, not what, what sort of era are we talking there? Sorry, I, 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 I don't know. This um, uh, as American Congresswoman, she she claimed at a Hanukkah party, I think last year, that that she had Sephardic ancestry. But I think it's quite a fashionable um, claim claim to make because the uh, the singer Grace Jones actually her her real name is Grace Mendoza, but. Um, Sadly, sadly, she's no relative of mine. I think it's a, a Catholic Mendoza family from from Panama or or, or some such. And on, on, on which point, I think it is it is worth saying that uh, Jamaicans, as well as other Caribbean people, are just hugely mobile. It's 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 something we ha that they have in common with um, Sephardim, and 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 they just seem to go everywhere. Um, so um, that perhaps makes it a little bit more difficult to research. Um, Tom, do you um, want to add anything, or shall we? Shall we start to? Mm, we should uh, close down, I think, okay. but not before we have thanked uh, Stephen uh, Delgado Porto uh, for his excellent talk and uh, the information he has given us and new ideas for research. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> uh, thank, thank, thank you, because um, as, as I say, the fact that you did all of this mostly before the internet is, 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 is quite, uh, quite um, remarkable. Let me see if I can um, share my own screen now. Um, or not. Um, so, um, Next week, we are looking forward to um, welcoming uh, Zachary uh, Edinger, who's from Sheriff Israel in New York. And that's uh, one of the most important congregations and one we haven't yet um, covered. So um, we're, we're greatly looking forward to that. He's a member of that congregation. I think he's the um, assistant um, Chazan there. And um, just, just to flag, in, in two weeks time, we are looking forward to uh, welcoming Alison Green, who is the author of the uh, prize-winning book on, on Sir Moses Montefiore. Um, and that's on the 27th of um, December, I believe. And um, just to remind everybody that uh, Ton and I um, do uh, uh, professional genealogical research. Um, so if you need a hand with that, please um, get in touch with us. You can try contact at Um And that is also, of course, if, if you want to apply for Portuguese citizenship, but um, for, um, for anything else um, too. Um, so I will um, cease um, sharing and um, like to thank everyone very much uh, for coming, obviously, uh, especially for uh, Steve. Um, Steve, if, if you can sort of um, hang around online, um, Ton and I will um, invite you back. Um, we look forward to seeing everybody uh, next week, first of all at uh, Bernard's talk at uh, two o'clock and then um, here with us. Um, at seven. Thank you. Thank you very, very much for, for your support. We really um, appreciate that this is great fun and especially to our, our uh, patrons and um, 